Well, today I would like uh, to put another beautiful specimen under the microscope, a pretty large specimen. Do you see this tree behind me? Well, that is the oldest oak tree in Europe, and it's estimated to be approximately 1,000 years old. Well, of course, needless to say, it's a huge uh, tree, and uh, putting a tree of that size under the microscope, well, that's not going to be so easy. How am I supposed to shrink it down all the way? Well, <laughs> there is a trick, uh, but uh, I was successful at the end and uh, maybe it's also the first time ever that the cells of this very tree have been observed under the microscope and uh, basically in this video this is the story on how how I've done that uh, let me quickly show you also some proof here that I was successful well because this here is the cross section of a small a tree branch uh, that I found and maybe it's uh, indeed for the first time ever that we're able to see those cells um, under the microscope. Now there for my, in my view there's something almost uh, philosophical about this uh, looking at the cells of uh, one of the largest and even oldest uh, um, organisms. It's, uh, I think that's uh, quite fascinating. Now I'm going to divide this video into several chapters or several parts and the, during the first part I want to dedicate uh, I want the first part I want to dedicate to the tree itself uh, I'll be then showing you in the second part a little bit of specimen preparation how I've prepared the wood of the tree and then um, at the last but not least in the last chapter we're actually going to have a, a look at the piece of wood um, under the microscope now there were indeed uh, several challenges that I had to solve it wasn't quite as straightforward as I hoped it to be um, and indeed it already started out with uh, the sample collection because basically all I needed was a piece of wood from the tree um, which I then had to properly prepare um, so that essentially I can look at it but obtaining that piece of wood without damaging the tree that was actually at the beginning a little bit of a challenge but then I had um, some, some good luck. So, but what I'm going to do now is, is I think I'm going to start at the very beginning here um, and uh, talk a little bit about how I even, um, yeah, why I'm even there in the first place. Last year and also this year in June, so two times, I visited this tree while spending a few days um, on a holiday there. This uh, tree can be found in the federal state of Styria in Austria, in Europe. And um, I don't know if it's really the oldest oak tree or not, at least uh, yeah, it's claimed to be and estimates uh, go that uh, it's around 1000 to even 1200 years old. Now I have absolutely no reason to doubt that. And I mean there are many old trees around of course, uh, but I do have to admit that this one is indeed uh, quite, uh, quite impressive. And the tree does even have its own uh, Wikipedia page. The tree is approximately 30 meters uh, tall and the circumference of the trunk alone is uh, almost 9 meters and the crown um, of the tree is about 50 meters across and uh, of course a significant part of the tree is not even visible because uh, the root system is probably as large as the whole visible part of the tree. Now the tree is uh, declared to be a so-called a natural monument so there are some uh, tables and benches beneath the tree for visitors to have a rest yeah, and um, it's basically um, a fairly well known um, in the local area. Now old trees like this one here are often hollow um, on the inside um, because as the tree grows uh, towards the outside the inside the basically the central part um, of the trunk starts to rot and decompose and uh, the living part of the tree is on the outside and the central part of the tree the core of the tree will then slowly start to disappear and sometimes in the 1970s uh, the tree was also damaged by lightning um, and uh, therefore it had to be filled out with concrete so they somehow poured concrete into the tree and I assume that they've done that in order to stabilize the tree but the problem was that this uh, water, water could not drain off and this uh, caused a buildup of water and uh, the tree started to rot uh, even faster. So they called a tree specialist, a tree doctor, um, and uh, they basically installed some drainage pipes for the water to run off and then the tree recovered again and that's basically where we are right now. Now, uh, as I was uh, walking around the tree to look for a sample, I realized, well, almost this tree is almost like an ecosystem all in itself. Uh, as I walked around, uh, I could see there were fungi growing on the bark of the tree. There were lichens, there was plenty of moss 
walls, of course. Yeah, and um, essentially, um, I said it was maybe I could collect some of that and put it under the microscope. But that, that's a little bit like cheating a little bit because the moss is, is not the tree, right? Uh, I'm quite sure that countless of insects uh, must have also been there. But I specifically wanted to uh, put a part of the tree itself under the microscope and not just some kind of stuff that was growing on the tree. Now, another big problem, as I mentioned already before, is, is the sample, uh, the sample collection, because which part of the tree should I put under the microscope? Now, I don't want to cut um, anything off uh, um, and don't, I don't want to damage the tree. So it's a little bit of a question of principle for me, even a, a small amount of uh, bark uh, from the tree collecting that really would not have hurt the tree. Uh, but I simply still didn't want to do that, right? Uh, I think it's important that even we as hobby microscopists and as uh, people who love the environment and nature, that we try to minimize damage as much, much as possible. And as I walked around the tree to find some kind of a specimen, I did notice that uh, the bark of the tree was not damaged at all by people who cut letters into the tree. So sometimes you can see that, that people so you take a knife and they cut uh, letters and initials and, and years into the bark of the tree. Um, and I've not seen that in this tree, which actually I think is quite nice and makes me happy because damaging the bark uh, can result actually also in fungi entering the tree and this would then also cause the tree to to become ill. So I did not find anything like that, but I did find one small uh, place, however, where people did leave behind some uh, markings and some initials, um, and indeed a few names, hearts and even dates going back a few hundred years uh, I could find there. So this was this little, yeah, they used uh, basically some paint uh, to write the initials um, and also some years in here. So I have to tell you, I have no problems with that really. It actually shows that the people um, did have some kind of a personal connection to the tree. So I'm perfectly fine with that. Now um, as I was searching for a specimen after a few minutes I did have a bit of luck because I found a few branches um, on the ground. Uh, everything was already quite dry and the wood was already fairly hard and stiff. Um, yeah it's after all it's oak wood which is pretty hard and dense and now the question of course remained and how can um, I um, how am I supposed to cut this um, into small sections to fit on a microscope slide? Um, first, I have to somehow soften the wood and uh, back home. Um, actually, I have done that. I took a few small pieces um, of the branch that I found and I placed those small pieces of wood into concentrated glycerol uh, for a week or two. Now, glycerol has the advantage uh, that the wood does not start to rot. Um, if uh, the wood did get a bit softer, but not very much. Um, and what I've done is that then heated it up in, in a microwave uh, to actually make uh, the wood much softer. And um, sometimes I've also read that you can also place the wood into water to soften it. Now I did not do that because uh, if you place it into water for a longer time, then indeed you have again the problem that fungi are going to start growing. But glycerin um, or glycerol as it's called was not a problem here. And now to the tricky part. And that's basically the sectioning or the micro toming because um, I placed a small piece um, of this wood um, after it's uh, been softened um, in, into my microtome and I started uh, to make um, a few very thin cuts and uh, the good thing is, is uh, that the glycerin also did not evaporate uh, so um, I simply left the sections uh, lying around on my microtome before I transferred them into water but that's another advantage that I found out that uh, normally uh, those uh, cross sections they're going to dry very quickly they're going to start shrinking but in this case it was not the case because of yeah of the glycerol now before mounting I, I did put it into a little bit of water and I checked under my stereo microscope if everything was fine and I could see that some um, of the cross sections were thinner than others and I used the thinner ones to make a microscope slide so um, you have to be careful that you don't damage them when you take them out with the tweezers. Uh, and indeed, um, I did da damage a few of them, but luckily I had many cross sections. So um, yeah, most of them were still um, okay. And now this is basically how it looks like under the microscope, right? <laughs> now, uh, despite uh, the thin sections, the wood was in some places still a little bit dark. So I could have made it a little bit thinner even. Um, but the basic arrangement of uh, the cells was quite well visible. Um, and I think it looks uh, quite pretty, I have to say. Yeah, I think uh, that uh, thinner cross sections would have been yet nicer, but there was a little bit at the limit of what my microtome and microtome knife were able to achieve. Probably I have to embed it properly in some kind of paraffin and then to use some kind of a rotating microtome to get even thinner cross sections. Yeah, but for hobby purposes and as a first trial, I think I was quite, um, yeah, quite, uh, quite happy with the results. 
Yeah, and uh, last but not least, uh, I did stitch everything together. It took several overlapping pictures uh, of the cross section and uh, I put them together and that's how it looks like. I think uh, I love the beautiful patterns. Um, yeah, I love the color contrast, uh, the, yeah, the regular arrangement of the vascular bundles. Um, don't want to get too biological about it, <laughs> but uh, I think it's uh, quite pretty. And I think that's almost everything that I have for you today. Um, because uh, if you like this picture, well, then um, you can download it. I want to make it available for you for download. And then you can also print it out and you can also hang it up uh, in your room if you want to. I would like to say thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe to this channel if you like microscopy videos like this. I wish you all the best. Uh, happy micro hunting as always. And hope to see you again in the next video. Bye bye.